The part for me for podcast number 901. Oh, the Dutch Grand Prix review. This is Todd. No, Todd, not that. AKA Negative Camber. You know what we do on race weekends. We watch one, then we talk about it. Then we watch one, then we talk about it. Come on, Todd. That's exactly what we do on race weekends. And in order to do that, though, I have to actually go find someone that knows what he's talking about because I certainly don't if you read the comment sections of our podcast. (laughs) And that means I got to go find him. Wrecked from out of the wasteland. He's bad. He's beautiful. He's crazy. It's... Hello, everybody. This is Paul Charles Lee, the international. Paul! Yes. Double podium for Heart of Racing this weekend. Yeah, not too shabby. Pretty nice in the right. SRO, In the heat right? of Virginia, we came V-I-R. through. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was it was it was a good weekend. Yeah, we made some strong gains in the championship for the pro car. Now we're only seventeen behind the fan favorite Rexy the dinosaur Porsche. Um, <laughs> it's like kids come up to our our trailer and say. Do you have the green dinosaur? No, get yeah. off. Get on your bike. Get out get of here, off. kid. Yeah. 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 So so we uh yeah, we made a lot of gains on that. So now it's gonna be a dog fight for the last two races of the year for the pro championship between us and them and maybe maybe the BMW that won, actually. We yeah. we we should have had a slightly better finish, had a slight um disagreement with IMSA on fuel flow. But, oh, you uh, went all George Russell on him, I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no. <laughs> cannot be right. This isn't right. Um, so, yeah. So, we had a little disagreement on that. but So, we yeah. got a drive through. But anyway, we will look deeper into that and see what was going on there. Uh, but, yeah, overall, really, really strong, you know? We yeah. Were, so, yeah. Everyone went away very, very happy. Good, good. Yes. Good result. Yeah. Good result. I can't remember. Are you guys doing anything in Austin coming up? In, uh, we're actually, yeah, we're doing World Endurance Championship in Austin. I'm leaving Thursday morning, heading down yeah. there. So, yeah. Okay. So, for anybody in Austin, Paul will be there at Coda. I will. I will. This coming yes. weekend. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to so be a little different than Le Mans, obviously. It's a different, different, different <laughs> thing entirely. So, yeah, it's, yeah. it's good, though. They're fourth in the championship in the World Endurance Championship. So, we'll see yeah. what happens. Should be a Ian's good place pumped. for the car. He's psyched. He's psyched. Yeah, get back behind the wheel. You know, yeah, yeah. he had to do managerial duties this week, but he, but the, he, he's a, such a strong driver for the bronze category in WEC that, um, yeah, I think he eagerly anticipates getting yeah. to grips with that because you need you need pace, but you need a lot of mental and uh, skill and and knowing how to run run a race at the beginning there. So yeah, yeah I think he loves doing that. I like I like watching him do it. It's, Good place for him. Yeah, that's good. That'll yeah. be exciting. Well, most fun. That's exciting. And you managed to get in the Dutch Grand Prix this weekend. I did, yes, by hook or by yeah. crook. I didn't get in qualifying, just going to let you know. Uh, I, get, I got some practices in, but I didn't get qualifying in. We were just a shade busy this weekend. So. You didn't see Logan scratch the paint there and needed to be buffed out? Uh, I did see that because that yeah. comes in the highlight reels. But, uh, yeah, right, right. yeah, that that was... Not optimum, we'll no, call it. No, it mm. wasn't. Wasn't at all. Well, let's talk about the Dutch Grand Prix at Zandvoort. You know, this uh, this originally showed up on the F1 calendar back in all the way back in 1952, if you can believe it. But then it spent, what, somewhere around three decades off the calendar. And then mm. they redid the track. I think they did a really good job of upgrading it, modernizing it. For the house that Max F1. built. The house yeah. that Max built, yeah, of course. Uh, and since it's been Max uh, back, Max has won it all three times. So heading into this weekend, you know, a lot of pressure, trying to go for that fourth win, which would have equaled, in my opinion, the GOAT, Jim Clark, four wins at a mm. Dutch Grand Prix, and he would have equaled that with Jim, uh, but did not happen. As the keen-eyed amongst you that watch the race this weekend will know, it's, was, the banking is certainly the big talking board. I kind of tend to, it's kind of that old-school track, 
Paul, mm-hmm. but I do kind of like the flow of it. I, yeah. Yeah, it feels like it, if, let me put it this way, it just feels like it would be fun to drive as a driver. For sure, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think the chains are a bit, uh, what could I say, a little less flowy than the rest of the track, but yeah. uh, but for sure, yeah, it's a good flowing track, and, and the camber's kind of fun, you know, when you're yeah. driving anything, kind of st- Dig, you dig into the ground there, so it's kind of fun. Yeah. Now, the the left hander is always the pointless, pointless inside move. Just never works, does it? it but how, how do you not go for it when you see, no. you know, the the heavens open up and everyone's off to the right, and you see this big I amount know. of asphalt on the inside? You, it's got to work this time. I know Alonso no, tried it. It doesn't work. Dove down inside. Yeah. It just didn't work. Yeah, know? but he no. gave it a go. You know? Yeah, but the, but it, it is interesting how camber changes so many things, even in a car with a massive amount of downforce, right? Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. it makes a big difference in cars without downforce, but even cars with big downforce, it that little bit of extra just, you know digs you in it's cool yeah it really does yeah. and i don't know the drs zone you know being able to deploy it on that high banking that 18 19 banking on that mm-hmm. final turn i you know i think i think they probably did that right i mean i'm not a fan of drs period but i guess you know if you're going to get down that straight and you've got that much banking then opening that DRS, drs up and letting you yeah. fly around that banking seemed to make sense right um so there's that uh the interesting part of the race for me though was you know, the the weather was quite a bit different between Friday and Saturday, and, you know, you had these spot rains and the heavy winds, and and I was kind of curious, you know, as, as they were doing practice runs, who was running what compounds and, yeah. and why, and then they had the enters and the full wets, and it was a hodgepodge of just about everything, and I was kind of curious to see during the race how the tire wear rates and, and tire degradation would sort of unfold or reveal itself not only between uh, really between compounds and then between compounds between teams between right. chassis right and so if there's anything that kind of caught my attention in this race this weekend was really kind of watching that unfold and you know it was manifest in several you know cars and their performance mm-hmm. and where they finish and i thought that was kind of an interesting point you know again i'm not a huge high degradation tire fan at all but it you no. know at least it was something that was kind of compelling to watch yeah, I mean, degradation comes no matter what the tire is. It's it always a factor yeah. to be, you know, used in. But there, I always say the split between teams was probably more exaggerated, probably by the weather, where the teams didn't have enough data to to try and sort their problems if they were having a problem with degradation. Yeah. Um, but definitely, you saw which chassis are kinder on the tires than not. Yeah. Right. And um, if you're kind on the tires and using that banking, um, you know that that obviously can really manifest itself to a, a lot of speed. Yeah, for sure. And then certainly a lot of talking point about Logan's crash uh, during qualifying, which mm. I, I mentioned, and then Lewis <laughs> eating Checo, right, and getting that uh, three-place group penalty starting down yeah. 14th. So yeah. that was kind of the highlights of, of qualifying, unfortunately, for Lewis. But but apart from the, the impeding, um, which I just think it was wrong, wrong place, wrong time, did he do anything untoward? No, but he, he couldn't just disappear either. Did yeah. it impede Checo? Yeah, probably did. But, you know, either way, I don't think it was. Yeah. Lucky we don't have those rules in IMSA, as was stated in the driver's briefing. Yeah. They don't even monitor it. No. They're, they're, right. I mean, they keep their eye on it, but there is no penalty for impeding. So they kind of like, okay, there you go, kids. Sort it out amongst yourselves. <laughs> you know? That's when Paul says, Robin's racing. Yeah, that's right. right, that's right. Not necessarily the worst idea in the world. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, agreed. Uh, so anyway, let's jump in. We'll start off top, the sharp end of the grid. You've got McLaren. By the way, just for grace, I am, see, here's your flag, Paul. Uh, I see it. See that on my shirt there? Yeah, you see so the you're papaya? supporting Williams? Oh. <laughs> the papaya chicken. And on the back, it says McLaren. Oh, McLaren. it does. It does. Yeah. So, you know, I'm you. I'm representing Lando here for you, Grace. Um, yeah. Got that going for me. You're probably going to jump to Man City fan club soon no. too, right? No, no, yeah. no. No. <laughs> no. I I jumped to the Hammers before I did. That. All right. That's what yes. I like to hear. Yes. Uh or Villa or Bournemouth maybe. Really? The cherries, Paul. Okay. You like You're the playing. cherries? No. No. But we're, we're <laughs> 
We'll be, we're playing them next next time, so there you go. Are you? Oh, okay. Yeah. There you go. Um, <laughs> so, uh, let's see. McLaren, Lando Norris, P1, take a convincing, I might add, victory. Uh, his teammate, Oscar Piastri, down in P4. After Friday's practice, I, I messed up my fantasy picks. Something mm-hmm. fierce this weekend. After Friday's practice, I had Oscar winning this race and Lando second, but boy, did I get that wrong. Lando had a terrific run despite losing the lead there at the start. Had a little too much wheel spin couldn't get off max jumped him at the start but it was very interesting to me to see that max he pulled a bit of a gap but he doesn't disappear and you know he got what about one and a half second gap ish Mm -hmm. maybe and then a few laps later really saw that lead disappear quickly and that's that's sort of manifest evidence of the tire degradation, right? And right. Um, and how quickly that disappeared. It does bring that notion, though, Paul, that you've, you and I have talked about on previous race, uh, just how good McLaren's chassis is on the balance and on its tires, yeah. right? And, and yeah. how they manage those tires over the run, long run pace. Traditionally, I would have said over the last half dozen races that while Max may not be the fastest car on outright one lap pace, I did feel that Red Bull's long run pace was still good. Um, and there were certain races that seemed to hold true, but, uh, but this race for sure at this track, the McLaren's long run pace seemed great. Lando ended up with the biggest winning margin so far this year at 22 seconds in ish. And if you divide, I mean, I'm just doing kitty math here, guys, on a calculator. But if you take yeah. that 22 seconds. You know how lead, good that goes. I know. It works great. I get called <laughs> out every time. You're an idiot, dude. you got to flip the variable. He won know. by 10,000 seconds. Yes. Yeah, exactly. I'm terrible at this. You know, mm. A kilogram is like three ounces. <laughs> no, it's like three pounds. Um, 22 seconds. And if you divide that by 72 laps, you basically get three tenths a lap, which is the pace delta that he had over Max during qualifying was about three tenths. Yeah. Um, not saying that's just simple math there. It sums it up. It's easy. Yeah. Just saying that's Problem what solved. Good night, everybody. Solved. That's it. <laughs> Done. Rest of the season's <laughs> over. He's three tenths. It did prove that out in the race. Um, about lap 15 ish is when it started to reveal that, you know, remember when they were radioing, you know, Hey, what do you think? Who are we racing? You know, that kind of odd right. conversation they were having. And the reality of it is, is he said, no, you know, tires feel pretty good. And I think about lap 15, you could see he was still good on those tires and the Red Bulls were struggling a lot at that point. Mm-hmm. And to the credit of McLaren, I know they've taken a couple pot shots about their strategy and overreaction or underreaction, those kind of things. And you and I've talked about in the past, if you're going to run with the, with the big teams, that's got to be impeccable, your strategy, because you you won't find Red Bull and Mercedes making those junior league mistakes typically, right? Right, right. And so McLaren, instead of overreacting, they went ahead and stuck to that plan. They felt that his pace was good enough. Even if they tried to undercut, they'd have it covered on fresh tires. They yeah. felt confident in that. And I think that started to really kind of reveal itself even as early as lap 15, 16 in my mind. But it, a fantastic drive by Lando. Measured, didn't put a foot wrong, looked absolutely terrific in qualifying. What a great week for Lando. Yeah, it's, it is interesting when you're talking about the strategy. Obviously, we've seen them make a couple of reactionary um, calls, etc., um, that haven't gone their way because it's like you got to get with the mindset that you have the best car that you can yeah. win the race. Yeah, that yeah. you have you have it in hand over the rest of the field. Don't don't make silly mistakes and think less of yourself or less of your car and your pace. And um, right. looks like they they were a bit calmer with that, a little more confident um, to let Lando, um, you know, give him the information, make that call, and ultimately, you know. Whichever call they made, really, uh, he was going to win the race. So, yeah, so. Uh, pretty easy, pretty easy to make the calls from there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, he was a class above, right? I mean, his teammate was there, but his teammate wasn't even on the podium. Um, so Lando was definitely in his element with that car at this track. Yeah, so it which was... is really important for him because mm. we've been talking about Oscar a lot. Mm-hmm. Right, it's yes. like is Lando up to the Oscar challenge? You know, right. well, uh, there you go. He, 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 at least he pushed his feet feet off the off the desk this week, right? Yeah, yeah. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. I would say Lando. Yeah, came back with a very strong answer. Uh, that's yeah. for sure. And uh, and I think it's also sorry. Go interrupt. Ahead. 
it's also so different to be a one Grand Prix winner mm. and a multi Grand Prix winner. Yeah. It's one thing to win a Grand Prix. And, you know, we've Olivier Penny won one, Joachim yeah. Mass won one. You know, there's Victoria Brambilla won a Grand Prix. But to do it more than once, then you know you're there, quite yeah. honestly. And I think that's just going to build up the confidence in Lando. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, he can be kind of hard on himself. I think, I think Lando's, uh, you know, he does, he takes personal inventory and, and I think he's in a lot of ways, maybe his own worst critic. Um, Mm -hmm. but, uh, so having that confidence, having a couple wins now under his belt uh, and in such a dominant fashion here was really a boost, I think for him too. I think that's really good uh, for Lando's mindset going into the balance of this, of this season with nine more races. And, and if you look at that, you know, whether he's got a realistic, uh, 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 chance at winning the driver's championship there that he can mount a challenge to the championship i still think that confidence uh pays dividends in that constructors championship for sure and uh um and that'll hopefully pay dividends in the long run for yeah. mclaren um <clears throat> oscar let's talk about him he he also got jumped at the start as well so both mclarens had a poor start mm-hmm. um and they left him out a long time and it's easy at the time to go, oh, man, you got a box and we got it. But, you know, th- th- much easier said than done. When you're the team calling strategy, you don't want to dump him out in the middle of a DRS train, right? right? So they're trying to find that gap um, to where they could box him, where you come out with a minimal impact and wouldn't leave too much work to do to get back up towards the front on fresher tires. Um, so they, uh, in, and in the process, while they were waiting, he got undercut by both George Russell and Charles Leclerc. Um, and Oscar managed to get back around the Mercedes pretty quickly. But I was a little surprised, Paul. He kind of stalled out, got up to yeah. Charles Leclerc and stalled out when trying trying to get around him for fourth. And I would say that, and we've talked about this in past podcasts, you know, one of the hardest things, um, and I always go back to Charles Leclerc as a good example. I've mentioned this before, but... Uh, Charles talking about how hard and how difficult it was to get on top of it when he was at Sauber, on how hard it was to get on top of the tires mm-hmm. and to understand the tires and find the windows and management, tire management, and when to put yeah. them and not to. And, and I think that Oscar's doing a really good job of getting his head around the HD tires, but I'd argue maybe the best part of that tire advantage that he had was pretty much used up by getting around the Mercedes. Yeah. Maybe leaving not a lot left for that Ferrari. But I don't want to discount the fact that Charles, I think, was driving a brilliant race in energy deployment and defense, too. Yeah, that definitely, definitely was a surprise. Seemed like a foregone conclusion that he was going to be back on the podium, but yeah. Charles, Charles had different ideas, and and you can say, okay, well, you know, Piastri had the same tire as as Lando, et cetera, but he he didn't do the job. But you're right, you you fight, you can take the peak out of a tire, um, you can destroy a tire where, where it just doesn't come back to you, mm-hmm. and well, while, while Lando was able to jump in the car and manage his tires from the front. Very, very different. Very if you different. can manage your tires, they'll be in a whole different placement than, than if you're fighting it out um, behind it with air wash and fighting it out with other people. So um, I, I still am surprised. I don't think it was Oscar's best race at all. Um, and Lando certainly points that out. We've pointed out, you know, or well, Perez was 22 seconds, um, you know, behind Verstappen. Well, Oscar was further behind Lando. So yeah. I, I would say Oscar would be pretty upset with himself from not executing enough to make uh, take advantage of the car's obvious superiority. But I think, um, yeah, I'm surprised he won't be able to get by. But I said uh, that's kudos to Charles for, for the fight he put on. Yeah, and I don't want to take a big blanket of eels and throw this over the entire operation of McLaren, but could one, Paul, sort of – lead to the notion that McLaren's comments in the past few races about clean air is king. Could one argue that the McLaren, if it's in clean air, it's it's yeah. a daunting asset. But if it's not in clean air, could that be a slight Achilles heel for them? It could. And and I think even even the Red Bull was a bit like that. And and we've seen the Mercedes in the seen past. The Mercedes in the past. Right. Yeah. It's it's hard when you see these numbers to give up on that just because of air wash, I think. Yeah. And and yeah. so they're, they're predicting 
okay, we've got the fastest car. We should call up our front, and then we'll lead from the front. It'll give us an even bigger advantage than our car already gives us. Right. And yeah, but if if you're, a mistake happens, you get stuck. Then then it's counterproductive, obviously. So I think that's a true statement. Um, the big thing for McLaren is you know they're just chunking out those points on Red Bull, aren't they? Oh, I mean. Yeah. Uh, everyone's you know spec talking about the drivers championship but man the constructors championship mclaren are for sure in the hunt against red bull that's where all the money's made yep yep i can guarantee you zach wants one of his drivers to win the constructors of course Absolutely. I mean, the drivers of course yeah. he does you know zach is a racer at heart of course he does but he knows as well as anyone the, the constructors pays the money and he desperately wants to make it go at that yeah, so, absolutely. And I don't know that Zach is the biggest Christian Horner fan in the world. So, so, <laughs> so winning. I'm not sure who is actually when yeah, you think about it. Yeah. yeah. So winning that constructors championship, I think, would be huge for Zach. I think it'd be great. Yeah. Um, let's talk about Red Bull. Uh, you've got Sergio Perez down in P6, Max Verstappen in P2. Max had a really good start. Jump Lando led the first part of the race, uh, but he didn't. As I mentioned, he didn't pull out a very large gap. Second, second and a half ish, around that, and that was really kind of the first sign. You know, in past, if he got the jump pulled out a second, second and a half, and then you would see Max kind of pull away six, seven, eight seconds. And that's in the last three years, you might, two years at least, you might see that. That didn't mm -hmm. happen here. And that was the first sign that he was vulnerable to McLaren's better degradation, better balance on that McLaren chassis, and better long run pace overall. Lando passed him, and then uh, this left the team. You know, he your strategy kicks in. What do we do? Is there a way that we can mount is there a way that we could unsettle McLaren as, as um, a Martin Brundle said, is there a way we could try to, you know, get our way back up there? So the team tried the undercut that didn't work. So Max knew he didn't have the pace. And at that point began managing his tires to, to finish P2. Yeah. It was his 200th Grand Prix at the ripe old age of what is he? 26, 27 years old. Uh, it's that old? Grand Prix. Yes. Oh, gosh. I know. Ready for his mm -hmm. AARP card and retire. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, you know, it was damn it. And I think that's what Max said. He said, look, P2 is about, I mean, that's where we were. We knew it and I raced to it. You know, that's yeah, yeah. Did. I mean, for him, he's he is all about the driver's championship. Yes. And he just, he knows what he needs to do to, to manage that. And his time will come when the Red Bull will win some races. So he's just making yeah. sure what, not to panic, don't overreact, get some good solid points, don't let Lando get too close. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, for Checo, uh, so he qualified P5, Paul, dropped down mm. and finished in P6. I'd say that Checo did better, so that's good news. But, and he did hold off Russell late in the race, so that's also, that's a start. But uh, he did finish the spot down from where he started. Checo says that the weekend exposed this is, if, is interesting. Um, I read the team press release. So Checo had said that the weekend exposed a few areas to the team and where they need to focus on. And then combined with Max's data that they have a lot of work to do. But this race and both 72 laps on both chassis really did mm -hmm. kind of hone where they're struggling. So that's mm -hmm. where they're going to focus. So maybe they harvest some good data. They kind of made the the... The statement, well, you know, we had a shutdown. We couldn't do anything. So we had a <laughs> car we finished uh, before the summer break. And <laughs> right. Nobody did anything over there. No, nothing. Nothing going on here. Nothing to yeah. see. Um, Checo said that uh, they did get data. There was some discussion that the older floor on Max's car also was worth about uh, 0 0.2 second deficit, two tenths deficit uh, in his pace. And so mm. there's a lot of work to be done there. Um, your scorecard on Checo? Um, you know, what do you give him a five or six? Yeah. You know, he's, he's still not doing what he needs to be doing, but he, at least he didn't do anything disastrous like some right. other drivers on the grid. So, yeah, yeah, right. you know, he didn't, he didn't do enough to let him say, oh, what the hell did we do? But yeah. I'm still think they should be expecting more from him. Right? right. I mean, the thing is when the car was dominant, he didn't make use of it. And now the no. car is not the best car and it's, it's, it's unfortunate for him. That window is gone. Yeah, it's gone. I mean, he he so, could have been winning races. He should, yeah, could have been winning races. Certainly should have been in the top three in qualifying, and yep. he wasn't, and now he probably won't be Yeah, unless they right. solve the car. Max yeah. can do it because Max 
Max is Max. Has the, has, uh, Max is, you know, overachieving the car, but, but yeah. Perez is not, probably rightfully so, because he needs to just finish the damn races, right? And yeah, yeah. Not yeah. do something silly. Right. Uh, next up is Ferrari at Charles Leclerc in P3, Carlos Sainz in P5. This was a good example of, you know, when we talk about lacking a single lap pace, but the race pace is much better. And oftentimes in the last couple of years, you would hear people in commentary say that about Red Bull, that, mm -hmm. you know, maybe they weren't the ultimate quickest over the qualifying session, but their long run long, long right. pace is astounding, right? This is actually a good tangible example of that. They were lacking that single lap pace on Friday, Paul, mm -hmm. I didn't factor Ferrari at all. I didn't have him in my fantasy picks. I didn't think they'd be there. Um, even in qualifying, it's kind of like, hmm, you know. But out of nowhere, Charles Leclerc managed to get a great start, got past Checo, and then managed in a in a fantastic tactical move from the strategy team to undercut both Russell and Piastri. Yeah. And that strategy was on point. I know a lot of people like to poke fun at Ferrari about, you know, their strategy, but they nailed it this weekend. Uh, their long run pace was very competitive and enough to hold off Piastri on much newer tires. So I just got to say kudos to Charles Leclerc for some in very crafty driving, very crafty energy deployment, and just at just the right spots on the track. Yeah. A fantastic drive from Charles Leclerc. Yeah, and no, he surprised it really, himself, Paul. Yeah, he did. He surprised everybody, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, it was spectacular, really. I mean, yeah. So that really did define a lot of, you know, if, if you hadn't noticed before that qualifying pace isn't everything, and one lap um, can really mask an ultimate team's real race pace mm -hmm. and um, really a learn. And obviously this track being with the degradation issues just reemphasizes that and the percentages go up on w what you can lose if you do have a, 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 a car that, you know, can't take care of the tires and, and, and Ferrari got their head around it. They, even if they didn't have the right, the single pace, it just shows you that that's one of their strengths that we need to keep in the back of our pocket and be aware of. Uh, going down the road at the different tracks that obviously have whole different levels of degradation eating you know, asphalt, you know? Yeah. And Paul, we often talk about long tracks like Spa where, you know, the, because of the length of the track, you, your imperfections, whether they're car, chassis balance, whatever it might be, or driver error, you know, getting a, a corner not right or whatever. We yeah. always talk about long tracks exposing that and compounding that over race and and how that is really hard to recover. But the same applies on these shorter tracks too, Paul, right? I mean, it, it, there's not enough track left to really overcome a mistake that you've made. There's not much room there, right? And, right. and in Ferrari's case that long run pace was absolutely there. Very competitive. It wasn't exposed by the shortness of the track or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then for Charles to nail every single corner, had he been ham fisted, sometimes we know he can overdrive the car a little bit. Yeah. He didn't pull any of that off and he stuck it and uh, finished. I just think it was a, a fantastic drive from Charles. Yeah. I think they must've known a little bit because of the way the strategy worked out. They were kind of mm -hmm. hoping that would, that was going to be the case, but mm -hmm. it was, it was very impressive though those last laps for him to you know hold off oscar till oscar had really toasted his tires yeah um as we see you know the drs was powerful enough for a lot of people had a lot of easy times getting getting around people down through the down the straight into the drs zone but um charles managed his power deployment very very well yeah um very difficult to do it's easy it's, I'm not, it's not easy to do but you can do it for a, two three laps Mm -hmm. Until you fully, fully, fully under the deployment, uh, so you've really got to manage where and when you regain that energy. And I think he, he just did a phenomenal job in using that to his advantage and 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 keeping Oscar out of a really good DRS close range to to just drive on by. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Carlos made good progress as well. He started tenth on the grid, made several overtakes, very competitive. Uh, pace to finish up in P6. Neither driver, as I mentioned, expected to have their pace given that their practice and qualifying times were kind of off the mark, but they found something friendly. Uh, you know, maybe, uh, you know, on Sunday, what maybe it was the track conditions, maybe the temperatures, maybe just the decent tire degradation. Maybe they mm -hmm. were managing the tires and they weren't that hard on this particular track. Um, 
And it, and I would say that Carlos's hard compound pace was really good on yeah. that last stint. I thought it was really good. I know I'm a Ferrari fan. I don't want to sound like a, a Ferrari fanboy. I mean, look, at the end of the day, third and, and six sucks for Ferrari, right? They want to <laughs> yeah. win, and they should be. I don't want to overplay this. But yeah. I don't think it was as bad a weekend as Ferrari's had in recent races. It, it isn't because they've been slipping, right? It's, yeah. it's been, you know, Mercedes. Who can win this week? Mercedes, Red Bull. Or is it McLaren? No one's really talking about Ferrari right now. Exactly. Yeah, they'll be around, but they don't have the pace to win a race right now. Hopefully, yeah. they will for their sake uh, at, at Monza next week. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so yeah, I, th- I think they, they, it was a, it was a, a step back up into uh, the top four lineup, but they still have a lot of work to do for sure. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Mercedes, Lewis Hamilton, P8, George Russell, P7. After a few wins, I had Mercedes much higher in the order of my fantasy mm-hmm. picks. Again, totally wrong. <laughs> I misread the tea leaves on this one miserably. Uh, Lewis started down P14, made the best of that soft compound start, re- went really long on those softs, uh, got up in the top 10 running on those softs, uh, once he switched to the hards, he had really good pace on those hards. Then he marched back to that field, fighting his way back up. I actually really enjoyed watching Lewis's race. I think he made the most of what he could uh, yeah. from where he started. Perhaps you could argue a little bit whether it was the team in the setup of the car during qualifying or maybe he cooked it in qualifying. You could argue he dug himself a hole there that he had to crawl mm-hmm. out, but crawl it, he did and finished up in, uh, in P8. So not a bad race for him. And his pace, as I mentioned on those hards, was actually pretty impressive. Yeah, it was pretty good, but uh, yeah, put yourself in a hole like that. You know, you got to have a pretty good car to fight your way through. Um, yeah. I, I, don't, I certainly don't think they're popping any champagne nope. after that race. That's pretty dismal after the pace they've had yeah. and ruining, obviously, a, a race, you know, point scoring from Russell um, yeah. due to that infringement. So, yeah, it's best of a bad situation, but definitely a bad situation for them here. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah. I know it's a unique circuit, and we can't it, – it's not like a, a soothsayer for the rest of the season at all. Um, but um, I think I think they're, they're, they kind of look more like we'd expect Ferrari have been this week, you know? Yeah. Um, that's not where they want to be. That's not where their momentum was carrying them, for sure. No, they were just winning races. So mm-hmm. this was, you know, I, I think I came by my fantasy picks, and that, you know, in all earnestness, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I was as surprised. By the way, the Park Ferme is still third out of 100 in the world. Um, third in the world. Yeah, third in the world. Well done, Great Park Ferme fans. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're doing well as a group. I'm letting them all down, but <laughs> thankfully we have some listeners that are doing great. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Russell jumped up to P3 at the start, had a good start. Then he was undercut by Leclerc and couldn't keep Piastri behind him. Um, what was interesting to me was the call to box. I didn't quite know if I was tracking on that. So they called him into box late mm-hmm. as Signs was coming a little closer. I'm not sure if Signs was a a given that he was going to pass him or not. I don't know. I'm curious if seeding track position was the right call as Piastri yeah. was really faced with the same option too, but he chose track position over fresh tires. And at some point the commentary team was suggesting, well, you know, Lewis is on fresh tire. He'll have to move over for George. And I thought, well, no, that would be horrible. Mm-hmm. They box him late. He had track position. They box him late. And then you ask him to move over for Lewis. That's BS. Right. Um, thankfully they didn't do that. That would have yeah. been BS. Um, so I, I didn't agree with that. I'm glad they didn't do that. The second stop cost him a position, and I'm curious if he didn't have enough pace to hold signs off and finish in P6. I don't yeah, know. we don't know. Um, I guess they didn't have the faith. Yeah, but and I thought they were just. I thought he would have the pace, and that he was going. They were going for a, a one point faster slap, but um, Norris obviously thwarted all everybody on that yeah, one. Uh, so that's what I thought they were doing, but obviously it didn't didn't, didn't work out, and. Um, They'll have to rethink that process, I would imagine. Yeah. And speaking of Norris, he got that fast lap on the final lap on yeah. four lap. That's old nuts. Guards. Absolutely Crazy. nuts. And you got both Mercedes out there on new t- new rubber just Did flailing not see away. That coming. Did yeah. not see that coming. No. I thought Lewis had it because he was on fresh yeah. tires. Yeah. Why, why wouldn't you, right? Yeah. 
Uh, let's see, Alpine, Pierre Gasly, P9, Esteban Ocon, P15. Gasly started in P9, finished in P9 after good qualifying, got into Q3. He was pretty feisty all day, Paul. Yeah. Several passes, and lots of those battled into turn one on the outside, no less. And I thought that was that was good. I enjoyed his passing. He was aggressive going in yeah. there. He held off cars behind him at the start, ran long, and then used his tire offset to pass Hulkenberg and hold off Alonso late in the race to finish up in P9 and in the points. And uh, a points delivery for his boss, his new boss, Ollie Oaks, his first uh, race as a team boss. So Yeah, no, that's great. I mean, because mm-hmm. they looked dismal mm-hmm. earlier in the week. Yeah. I mean, they look like the, pretty much about the worst team apart from, you know, the stake F1 team or whatever. Right. Um, so, yeah, for them to actually get into Q1, Q3 and then stay there and, and score points, I think was massive for the team and for Gasly. I think he was feisty. I think he out Alonso to Alonso, didn't he? he did. In that first turn. I mean, it, that's he exactly did. what Alonso did last year from my remember. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's a good idea to study with Alonso moves and use them against them. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's pretty funny. It is funny. Um, Esteban said he was stuck in the DRS train, couldn't make much of an impression on those in front of him. Curious at the, as, I'm kind of curious about that performance delta between him and, and, and Gasly. Because uh, in my mind, Ocon's normally faster than that. Mm-hmm. He's usually there, thereabouts with Pierre. Um, yeah. And I'm wondering, I don't know, I wonder about the motivation, if it's still there with him. I'm not suggesting that he's purposely loafing. I'm just kind of curious because yeah. I would have expected Esteban to be more of a factor. Um, yeah. He's you, you would. I, I don't think he's unmotivated. I think Ocon's usually pretty motivated. Uh, it didn't work out for him. But um, yeah. I, th- I think he's more motivated to prove them wrong. Yeah, getting maybe. rid of him, quite yeah, honestly. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. But you never know how the dynamics go. They are a French team, after all. <laughs> <Wait>. So the <laughs> the dynamics in a French team are are second to none. Uh, not yeah. nef- necessary in a good way. So just ask Alain Prost. Yes, exactly, yeah, and and many more right. along the way. So yeah, yeah. yeah, I I think once you're on your way out, you may as well just walk out the door, quite honestly. Yeah. So yeah. we'll we'll see. I think they're in a desperate situation where they can't afford to do that. And play yeah. those games, but it doesn't mean they don't. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Uh, I totally agree. Uh, mm. Aston Martin, Stroll, uh, Lance Stroll, P13, Fernando Alonso, P10. Both cars look competitive this weekend qualifying, but they lost spots at the start. And realistically, they were just hoping to finish where they started. But Lance got a five second penalty for speeding in the pit lane. That left him out of the points. Alonso did manage a spirited run to P10. The sting was losing to the Alpine, right? So mm-hmm. that's not a good result for them. They would have assumed they would have been ahead of the Alpine. Yeah, and, well, everyone. <clears throat> yeah, they knew the top eight positions were going to be the top four right. teams. They knew yeah. that. But they figured they'd be fifth, right? Um, yeah. But, yeah, tough tough weekend for them. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a tough situation when literally if every car finishes, you, you're you really fighting for ninth and tenth place at this point. Yeah. yeah. Um, how it, motivating is that for Fred? Yeah, not not very. Um, it's a shame because you know they were they were feisty there not too long ago, but it seems like they've lost lost the juice. Someone lost the notebook with all the good stuff on it. Yeah. Um, I don't know how. I can't tell them how to retrace it, but um, definitely probably needs a shake up there to try and get themselves pushing forward in a different direction. I would say. Martin caught up with Lawrence on his grid walk. And he was asking about the team and Lawrence, you know how serious Lawrence is. You know, mm-hmm. oh, what do you think? You know, we'd like to finish where we started and blah, blah, blah. And then as they started to walk away, <laughs> Martin had the microphone. He goes, and when did you say that Adrian knew he was going to start? <laughs> and Lawrence is like, what? He goes, I, I didn't mention anything about Adrian. <laughs> Martin's like, I'm just being cheeky. You know? <laughs> Trying to catch him off guard there. Well done, Martin. I thought that was mm-hmm. good. Uh, let's see, Haas F1, Nico Hulkenberg, P11, Kevin Magnussen down at P18. Despite rumors of, of court drama and potential for confiscation of their cars and assets regarding the yep. Ucali uh, situation, Haas soldiered on for the weekend saying that their lawyers were looking into it. Kevin started from pit lane because he had made a chassis adjustment while in Park for May. So he started, they put him on hards, ran longer than anyone else on those hards. And to try to make that work, unfortunately, they were hoping for a safety car something, Paul, that would be yeah. a cheap stop. But we didn't even have a yellow flag during this race. No, and it's so, crazy, right? 
Yeah, yeah. it was. When there was a 67% chance of a safety car. Um, yeah. <laughs> once he did. Another, uh, another thing I lost in my picks. I said two two safety I cars. Think, and oh, I said zero. one. I lost that. Yeah. Uh, once he did box, obviously fell down out of the points. Mm-hmm. And, and it didn't, you know, you gambled. It didn't work. Nothing really to do with Kevin. But um, that happened. By contrast, though, Nico boxed early, went long, and ran out of tires to hold off Gasly and Alonso at that point. But I, th- I did kind of like the scraps with Nico. I thought those were good. Yeah, yeah, it's it's. I don't know what to say. Um, they threw something against the wall, and l- likelihood it would have worked. Right. You know, if it wasn't those dumb kids. So yeah, right. Uh, Waiting for all those it, faster cars. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're fighting for the last two places. You may as well give it a go. It certainly wasn't a bad idea. Um, yeah, normal, normally that would be a, a fine, fine way to attack it, but this this race just kept going, which is maybe why it was, it was a, a little pedestrian affair, not the yeah. exciting, uh, you know, fencing that we've seen yeah. in the past recently. Yeah, uh, I agree. I agree. Unfortunate. Um, yeah. Let's see. RB, Daniel Ricardo down in P12, Yuki Snow to P17. Yuki started on softs, and they didn't really work out like they did for Lewis uh, at the beginning. So they stopped him early, and this put him on a two-stop strategy, Paul, and that clearly is a slower strategy. And then to add to that, he said he didn't think the stop timing was right. They got that wrong. Um, He didn't think that was correct. And then they put him out in traffic all day, and that meant that he finished down P17. So it's going to be somebody's ass at RP when Yuki gets all done with him. (laughs) Yes. Yes. I'm I'm not going to tune into Yuki's rants this week. No. It'd be just an onslaught of white noise and swearing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it will be. Uh, Let's see. Dan didn't have the best qualifying. He was beat by Yuki in qualifying, but he started P13 thanks to a few penalties ahead of him, got moved up, and he turned that into a P12, so he finished a spot higher than he did. In the end, Zanfort just wasn't a friendly track. Not Mm -hmm. friendly. Not friendly. Not friendly. No. Yeah. And so Dan was like, hey, we'll look to bounce back at Monza. Okay. Yeah, of course we will. Yeah. Hopefully you're there, Dan. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, I love but, Dan's positivity. Yeah, I really felt like it was a positive race. I delivered everything I could. And, you know, it's sort of a, a bigging up uh, press release there after the race. Yeah, how do you even? Yeah. yeah, it's what you have to do, but it's painful to yeah, listen no, to. It's painful. It is yeah. painful. Uh, let's see. That leaves us down at Williams. <laughs> Uh, you got Alex Alba on P14, Logan Sarge on P16. What a miserable week for James mm-hmm. and the team. They had the disqualification for Albon due to an errant upgrade that um, that was outside of the FI regulation measurements on his yeah. floor. Then you had the car totaled on Saturday by Logan. Lots of talk about Williams asking around to find somebody <laughs> else to finish the season. Hey, has anyone got a driver in here? And, and Toto's like, Mm, mm. I have Mick Schumacher. <laughs> you mean Mick no front wing Schumacher? Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Wasn't there some young kid there? Nope. No, I don't know him. Yeah. But we do have Mick Schumacher. Yeah. Yes. If I was James, I'd be on the phone over to Laurent Mackey's. Could we borrow Liam? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah we don't we have, have the lobster thermidor today, but we do have a fish sandwich we'd like to <laughs> entice you with. <laughs> Oh. How about some cod cut-ups? <laughs> hmm. No, thanks. Well, maybe uh, it's better than what I have, but I'm not that yeah. excited about it. I know. Yeah, it yeah it's it's yeah, it's yeah, nuts. Um, Albon yeah. was running pretty well, yeah. even though, uh, you know. From where, he, from where he came from, we know how hard did. it was to move up. It was nearly an impossible factor. He did. I um, mean, he kind of had his toe in the points, but then, yeah. then they – Switch to the two stopper, and that didn't. Yeah, work. I'm not exactly privy to how Formula One measure things and do things, but if you bring new components, you should definitely get it measured by the sanctioning body and not just trust it yourself. That's yeah. what we have to do. You know, if we change the setup on the car every time, we have to roll that car out. We've got our own measurements of what we made, and we go, oh, it should be good. Then you take it to the scrutineering bay, they recheck it, and maybe it's off. So you you yeah. got to adjust yourself to what the scrutineering bay is telling you yeah. whether you think it's right or wrong. And so they, they, that's a misstep. Once again, maybe another learning curve of being a new boss. 
right? Um, yeah. Now, what do they do with Logan? <sighs> I mean, they already made the mistake by keeping him going. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's obviously not paying off, is it? Uh, yeah. I, I would, I would, I would not have him drive again. He, yeah. Thing is, we, we can't, we'll never see the best Logan me now because he's absolutely destroyed mentally. Yeah, I agree. Right. I, agree. I mean, you, you're not going to turn them around by sitting them down, and saying, "Come on, fella, we all believe in you." Obviously, you don't believe in you. You're being fired. Obviously, we don't believe in you. You keep crashing the cars. Yeah. So it's time to move on. You're not going to be worse by putting a new driver in there. Right. You're just not. No. He's he's not quick and he's crashing. Right. I can do that. Yeah. Right. I could do that. There you go. So let let's let's stop the pretense and get on with it and move on. Be you know make a hard decision and, and get someone in there. There are some really good drivers who yeah. are sitting around. Yep. Who would be more than capable of jumping in that car and and, and taking it a bit further up. I think grid. I think any of those teams, whether it's McLaren or RB or yeah. any one of those. I would think they'd be interested in getting their reserve driver in that car for yeah. the balance of the season just to get yeah. seat time. Yeah. I mean, obviously there's yeah. politics involved and different manufacturers yeah. crossing yeah. and, you know, you yeah. have to learn a whole new book and page and, and sometimes yeah. you don't want another driver getting a look in on what this, this manufacturer is doing. Yeah. So those things have to be taken into account, but I still think there's a better solution than what yeah. they've chosen. Yeah, that's kind of why I'm thinking either Mick, you know, I'm sure, you know, why Mick, Toto? He's been in the news yesterday as bigging up Mick as an, as yeah. an option or today. Why not Kimi Antonelli? Yeah. Hmm? Yeah, I don't know. So anyway, yeah, it's unfortunate. Really yeah. bad. And if that wasn't bad enough, we get down to Kick Sauber. Mm. <laughs> This was the only team to finish two laps down. Yeah. And I'm I think, I think they're probably covered up. If there's any Audi badges anywhere, they're kind of covering them up right now. <laughs> you know, kind of like a paper bag over your head. Yeah. You know, when your yeah. team's losing everything, it's like, oh, mm. this is embarrassing. Yeah. What team? We? Oh, no, we're not Audi yet. No, 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 no. no. I don't, too bad. We'll fix it when we become Audi. No, we're steak. F1 yeah. Kick. Yeah, uh, we're, we're, yeah. We're puke green. Right. Let the sponsors yeah. take all the heat. With a driver that shows his butt all the time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. The driver that shows his butt everywhere. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's bad. I don't, Paul, how do you keep the mechanics and engineers? How do they stay motivated in a situation like this for I the do team? Not know. Yeah. You, it's, you probably can't. Yeah. You know, promises of tomorrow. But I know. I feel so That's bad. all you can do. But as, as we talk, we kind of talked about it before. It's going to be a big turnover, and not necessarily everyone that's there is going to be yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, and maybe they don't know. Yeah, right. Right, and and so that makes it even less motivation because they're like, right. "Well, I got to go find another job." Obviously, they haven't even talked to me about what I'm right. doing next year. Right. right, right. Tough. All right, let's give out some awards. We always do that. The first award we always give out is "Move the Race." We'll do it live. Yes, move the race, Paul. Who's that? I'm giving it. To Lando for that last lap push to destroy the field mentally. I mean, to do that, that on old tires out. was just, yeah. what a slap in the face. It was. Four <laughs> lap old hard compounds nailed yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. That was that was a max move if there ever was one. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I don't think he even forewarned the McLaren team that he was doing that. But yeah. he obviously... Felt pretty good in that car. That's all I can say. Yeah. What did he say after the race? He parroted Max, simply wonderful, or whatever it was. <laughs> oh yes, he yeah. did. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. they're buddies. I mean, you know, that's a, that's a that's a jab at Max. Everybody's yeah. like, oh, he's a savage. It was like they're friends, and Max yeah. think it's funny. Um, yeah. So you know, they're making simply nice lovely. Humor. Simply lovely. Yeah. 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 Um, let's see. I had Leclerc's undercut. Okay. I thought that was. Perfectly timed, put him in that position, undercut two cars, held on, and made a podium out of something that, yep. quite honestly, probably wasn't podium you know, material. material. Yeah, so I would say. I thought that was a great move. Um, all right, next award is Donkey the Race. We'll do it live! All right, Paul. All right, I, 
It was just something that's kind of bugged me for a while. And I yeah. saw it again. It just kind of cropped up. It's the it's the pointless DRS block or move. <laughs> it's like the guy's got DRS. He's like two temps on your butt, and then you pull hard right to block that inside pass, and he just drives by you on the outside, you know, oh, yeah. and it's turned in before you even get to the breaking point by that, you know. Yeah. It's just like, what are I you know. doing? I, like, I drive in the middle of the road for crying out loud, but don't. Don't make it even easier. You just no. pull out. They're not. They're not going to try and outbreak you on the inside. They go around the outside. They go like, yeah. It's just. It. Yeah. I, maybe they're like. I well, I can't do anything, so I'm going to make it. I'm going to make a drama out of it. You know. Yeah. Make it obvious. Yeah. Make it obvious that it's DRS and they're not. Yeah, it's than not me. me. Yeah. 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 I mean, I would hold the line on the outside as you normally would if they're going to go for it with DRS. Make them go make offline. Them offline. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, there's always marbles out there and stuff. Make make him work for it. Right? Yep. And yep. make him get it woed up on the inside of corner where he's got a more steeper angle at the at the apex. Yeah. Right? Or okay, get in the middle and make him question question his future. Yeah. And why he ever chose to do this for a living. <laughs> right. I agree. Uh, let's see. My donkey. It was really Logan and Williams both. Yeah. You know, it's it's getting the measurement wrong. They said, oh, it's just by you know millimeters. Like, well, okay, but if it was that. If it was that small, then you should have nailed it, you know. Yeah. Um, and I'm, you know, James, uh, James knows that, and I'm sure, you know, he'll take that on his shoulders. But yeah, mm-hmm. it's a bad move, and then destroying yep. the car is just. Yep. Yeah. It's it's a process problem that they got to yeah. fix. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. All right, and then final award is drive of the race. Get down. Yes. Drive the race. Who'd you have? I'm giving it to Chuck. Good for you. Yeah. I thought it was, I thought it was very impressive in, in not even, you know, fighting off the best car in the field. Yeah. You know, for several laps. Yeah. With newer tires behind you. Yeah. I think that was mighty impressive management of pace and where to go fast and where not to, to hold off skill. Because, you know, as I said, we, we do. Oscar's a pretty damn good driver and he'll get a pass done when he can. So Charles outdid himself there. He did a great job. Yeah, I totally agree. I was going to pick Charles and I thought everybody was going to call me a Ferrari fanboy. So I, I ended up picking Lando because I thought it was mm-hmm. a, a superlative uh, yep. weekend for Lando. Just a, a sure sublime was. race uh, from him. Yep. But I, I agree with you on Charles. I just think that was terrific. Uh, it was great. All right. Uh, All should we, right. Should we, you know, quick mailbag. You've got mail. Gary, Gary says, uh, it's not a question, but it was just kind of a funny comment. He said, well, yeah. that was an exciting race. <laughs> Tongue in cheek. He said, mm-hmm. and look at the point standings now. Max leads Norris by 70 points. There are nine races and three sprints left in the season. Let's say that Lando wins every one with Max second. That means that he makes up nine times seven. Plus three equals 66 points. So Norris mm-hmm. still finishes second in the championship, and McLaren can kick themselves in the backside for ordering him to let Piastri win in Hungary. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But we you know what? We talked about it at the time. We did. But you know what? I, they, they, as I said, they want to win the Manufacturers Championship. They do. And to do that, they need Oscar on their side. They do. They and they do. don't want to lose Oscar. That's right. So. Yeah. I still think that decision was correct, even keeping the drivers' championship in, even if they they lost by that that amount. Yeah, I think. I, agree. I think. Yeah, I, yeah. It's you, you can't change the dynamic in the team. You can't you can't start having the drivers second guess whether whether you're being truthful about strategy and things like that. So, um, no, I I you know. Th- I remember thinking about it quite a bit around that race. And I was thinking, you know, if I'm Zach, I, you know, I want the constructors. I yeah. need Oscar higher in the points. I need yeah. the cars up there. I need Oscar a hundred percent all on board. I need some harmony in there. I'll talk to Lando about it. He'll understand, but we need mm-hmm. the points, you know, yep. as a team. So I agree. Uh, but good comment, Gary. I appreciate that. Yeah. All right, Paul, we have precious little time. You're going to be down <sighs> at Coda this weekend, but you yes, also, Sam. Have the Italian Grand Prix at Monza. Man, so much, so much to look forward to this week. Yeah, I know. Yes. It's going to be amazing. We're going to be back next week reviewing the uh, Italian Grand Prix. It's pretty we exciting. We shall do, yes. 
But until that time, you can leave your comment. Tell us what you think about the Dutch Grand Prix. You can go um, let us know what you think about that uh, lion and the driver parade lap, as I post on TikTok, um, <laughs> and tell, let us know. But until that time, you can go to theparkforme.com, share your opinion as always. If you like the podcast, you can go and give us a good rating on your favorite podcast player. Spread the word, spread the news. I'm sorry. I, somebody just did not like our podcast 900. Uh, left really? A yeah, just slated us uh, for that. That was wow. unfortunate. So, uh, well, I had fun, yeah. so that's what's important. I did too. I had a good time. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Yeah. Every now and, now and then, you yeah, got to let your head down and have a little fun, right? Well, it was the 900th podcast too. Yeah. And, you know, you're thinking, well, you know, I mean, could we... I mean, it's self-serving, but after 900 yeah. episodes and thousands and thousands I think it's of hours. A, I rightfully thinking, so. Yeah, yeah. Could I have a, a little, you know, respite, as you might call it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I got slated. No longer a Patreon supporter. So I, we need somebody Oof. to replace him as a Patreon supporter. Mm -hmm. So if you're out there, I appreciate it. He's like, all these other podcasts are mentioned. You're not even mentioned. That's how bad you are. He's like, well, okay. Okay. That's fine. Um, but anyway... Thanks for listening when you did. Uh, but if you'd like to be a Patreon supporter, you can do that. Uh, you just go to our website down at the very bottom or on the right-hand side. There's a link to it. You can go and support. And when you do that, uh, you can join us, our live audiences, when we record at the usual time. But next week, Paul and I will be back to do it all over again and review the Italian Grand Prix. Should be exciting. As a Ferrari fanboy, I'm not holding out much hope, but let's see what mm. happens. They did win Monaco, so there's that. Um, you think Very similar Ferrari, tracks. You think, the, you think that is, Ferraris will be trimmed out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't think they trim them out enough, quite honestly, yeah. but there you go. No, I'll be surprised I don't want to give you false hopes. I know. I'll be surprised if you make it through the Lesmos. <laughs> <It's very laughs> scary. They'll be so trimmed out. You know? Yeah. So anyway, all right. Until that time, we'll come back and do it all over again. And this is Todd, a.k.a. Negative Cambers, saying so long. That's it, man. Game over, man. It's game over. I don't feel like I'm going to prove it all. I, I don't think I, I don't really want to prove anything. I started as an amateur not, uh, with no idea or no intention of uh, becoming a world champion. It was, I was curious to find out um, what it was like to drive a car fast, to drive on a certain circuit, to drive a certain type of car.